What is going on guys? It is Nisha here and we are back here finishing part three of Basel of Legend Relentless Revenge. All the new cards, new interesting hype and interesting cards from uh, the set. So uh, yeah, uh, so we're starting off with an archetype that's kind of new. Uh, I mean, if you even want to call it an archetype. So it's like three level five warrior monsters that all like pretty much just get to normal summon themselves for free if you control another one. Or if your opponent controls a monster and you don't. And then two fusions where it's kind of like the Lunar Lights where you have to have the smaller fusion to go into the bigger fusion. So, yeah. Um, honestly, when I first saw them, I was like, hey, you know, they have some cool artworks. Hopefully, you know, it can be a cool archetype that works by itself. But, you know, um, expecting that from Konami was a little too much. You know, warrior, warrior archetypes aren't, aren't allowed to be good anymore unless they're Gokis or uh, Brandish. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so if your opponent controls a monster, or if you control a light monster, you can arm some this card without tributing. If this card is normal or special summon, you can special summon level 5 light warrior monster from your hand. And so you can only use this effect of high out of the Earth Star once per turn. Once per turn, when your warrior monster is targeted for attacking, make this card lose exactly 500 attacking if you do negate the attack. And so the level 5 light warrior monster you'll be playing are the other two, right? And so, um... Yeah, and he lets himself lose attack to negate attacks. So, yeah, just free normal summon, special summon from level 5 lights from the hand, and then negate attacks. So, if your opponent controls a monster, or if you control an earth monster, you can also summon this card without tributing. If this card is no more special summon, you can special summon level 5 earth warrior monster from your hand. Unfortunately, I really would have liked it if it said hand or graveyard. Same thing for Hayate. Like, if it would have said hand or graveyard, you know that that would be nice, but guess not. And so um, you can only use this effect once per turn. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a warrior monster you control, you can make this card lose the active value of your attack. And if you do negate that activation, if you do destroy that card. So if any of your monsters get targeted, warrior monsters get targeted, you can negate those effects. And he just summoned, and both of these guys just summon each other. So Hayati summons level 5... Uh, Light Warriors, Tenma summons level 5 Earth Warriors. And uh, Kaiki, the last one, I think the most interesting looking one out of all three of them. Uh, when this card is special summoned, you can pay 500 life points to feature summon one warrior fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. And so, pretty much, uh, you know, if you have, you know, one of these two guys out, if you normal summon Hayate and then Hayate activates its effect. You can special summon Kaiki, but if you have Tenma and you have all three, you know, you can normal summon out Tenma first, and then Tenma can normal summon out uh, or special summon out Hayate, and then Hayate can special summon out Kaiki. So they aren't exactly bricky, it's just they don't do much by themselves, and there aren't enough cards with them because these are the only three, uh, you know, cards that are in their theme. You could say not really archetype, but theme. Uh, that really work together. It's, it's kind of like super defense robos, you know, it's only like three or four cards like it's not a deck It's it's just a theme But his second effect does actually let him special summon himself So during your opponent's turn if you control a level 5 or higher warrior monster who's, whose current attack is different from its original attack You can special summon this card from your graveyard so after he special summoned You know he gets a fusion of himself so pretty much um or he gets to let you fusion summon a warrior uh, fusion monster from your extra deck, yeah, which the other two fusions are, are warriors, and we'll see those in a minute. But pretty much, um, since both these guys manipulate their attack, um, you know, it's going to be real easy for you to summon him from the grave, and then, you know, get yourself a nice big fusion on board. The one you would go into, because I looked up all warrior fusions, and unless you're playing heroes, this is the guy you're going into. Um, I did in the Conqueror Star. If this card's fusion summon, you get out a level 5 warrior monster from your deck to your hand. So it, the, they do kind of float themselves, you could say. Um, it's, it's nice that they have a searcher, but, you know, like how exactly are you going to search them, um, you know, initially? And so you can only use this effect of I did in the Conqueror Star once per turn. Once per turn, you can start any number of cards. This card gains 200 attack for each card discarded. Once per battle, discard battles an opponent's monster with an equal or lower level. During damage calculation, you can make that opponent's monster become zero during that battle damage calculation only. So, 
again, it, it only applies to levels, but you know, it's nice. And then the the whole discarding part, I don't even know why why it's there. I don't even know why you would want to discard to make him gain 200 per card. That that's so minus. But I mean, at least he searches when he summoned, and he can stop any monster that's level 10 or lower from like battling him because he's gonna have. Uh, you know, like he's going to make that opponent's monster zero. And so before we continue, the one thing that I just want to point out is that this would also work in, you guessed it, the deck nobody uses anymore, UAs. And, you know, the reason I say that is because the field spell, um, UA to uh, stadium, the attack gain that they would gain is permanent. So, you know, every time you special the UA monster, all your, every single monster you control gains 500 attack. And so, you know, you it's it's very easy for you to get a warrior who has higher attack than usual. So, you know, if you have him and you like you don't even need to play three copies of him. You can only play like one or two copy and it will still work. Because all you need to do is just discard him. And then uh, you know, when your opponent's turn comes around, you just special summon him and then just fusion him and you know, something that isn't your perfect ace. Maybe like your um uh slugger or Dunker or whatever or not, and then you could get a free uh, Idit and the, the, the Conqueror Star, you know? And then he searches, you know, yourself another Slugger or Perfect Ace or whatever. Whatever you want. Any a little level 5 or higher warrior. So that that can work in UA, but um just not just these two. You can you can tr you can definitely try to make a deck that's focused around these three monsters only, but it would be such a weird deck. You would have to be playing so many weird cards, like um, maybe like the Swamp Battle Guards and like uh, Feast of the Wild level five, because uh, if not, then you know there's really it's going to be real hard to make this deck work, because there's going to be no real way to search a lot of these monsters by themselves. Uh, maybe you know, maybe you know you could get a whole level five deck working, level five warrior deck working, but. Um, that seems a bit far-fetched. UAs seem like the best option to play this, and the most consistent option. And UAs in themselves aren't really that consistent, which really shows goes to show you um, how you know small of a chance you have with making this deck. But I'll see what I can come up with, because I definitely do like the idea of these cards. So lastly, we have Shura the Combat Star, the level 12 uh, Warrior Fusion. And he does require the other fusion plus a level 5 or, or, or higher warrior type monster. And he comes in with zero attack, but he definitely does make up with it uh, by his effect. And so once per turn during the battle phase, you can tar uh, change the attack of all mo face of monsters your opponent controls to zero. So it's like no cost, no nothing, quick effect at any time. Even like damage calculation, just change all their attacks to zero. It's kind of like a, a big like uh, FU to your opponent. You know, all at once. And so once per, per battle, if two monsters battle during damage calculation, you can make each of the, those battling monsters gain attack equal to their own level times 200. And so, you know, if you're in a situation where you have like a Shura and a Idaton out, he would gain like freaking 2,000 because he's he's level 10. Or even Shura would gain like 2,400 because he's a level uh, 12. So like it's some like like he he wouldn't want to battle by himself like you wouldn't want sure it's a battle, but um, you know uh, if you know it, it's it's once per battle and it's uh, as many times as you want per turn, I would I would say so yeah. So uh, you know you just keep doing that you know it's as many times as you want. Although the attack game is only until the, uh, the end of damage calculation, um, it's still I guess okay. And then if this fusion summon card you control show by opponents. The card by battle by card effect and sent to your graveyard. You can special more items in the conqueror star from your extra deck. It should have just said it is fusion because summon card leaves the field. You should be able to do that because I feel like the this this little theme again. I don't want to call it an archetype. Uh, doesn't really have a lot going for it. So they they should just push these cards to like to the maximum and just said hey here just just take it. We're not we're not giving you any more support for for this theme, but uh, you can definitely make it work.